how much error is introduced when taking a non-perpendicular reflectorless total station measurement. There are several reasons additional error is introduced when taking a measurement in this manner. Less of the measurement's laser is reflected back to the total station through the objective lens and into the photosensor of the EDM. The less signal the photosensor has to work with, the harder it is to distinguish between the peak of the returned signal and the ambient noise. The shape of the laser's footprint that samples the surface it's measuring is distorted. An uneven distribution of signal is reflected from either side of where the crosshair is actually pointing. As angle of incidence and distance from target increases, it becomes more difficult to manually aim at the precise center of target. To evaluate the magnitude of this error, I ran test after test after test in various situations using various methods at different distances and different angles, and after days in the field and even more time spent combing through the data, I came to three conclusions. Even at distances of hundreds of meters and very steep angles, it was possible to make accurate reflectorless measurements. Of the over 130 measurements made, only four had distance deviations of three millimeters or higher, which was the reflectorless distance spec of the instrument I was using. And all four of those were at an angle of over 45 degrees. But there were also plenty of measurements at an angle of incidence of over 50 degrees that had deviations between zero and two millimeters to the reference values. Taking dual face measurements is always important when high accuracy is desired, but even more so when measuring reflectorlessly to a tilted surface. Any uncalibrated angular collimation in the optical axis or EDM can wreak havoc on the accuracy of the measured distance. All the error seen was very random in nature. Tilted observations didn't produce a statistically significant longer or shorter distance compared to a prism. We've barely scratched the surface on this topic and in a couple weeks I'll be releasing an hour long video going deep into the math and physics of measuring distances with a laser, so be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if this topic interests you.